My name is Alex Cervello and I'm a veterinary pathologist. Veterinary pathology is the study of animal diseases and it's based on the understanding of the biological and the cellular processes involved in animal disease and that's why you'll often see a veterinary pathologist looking down the microscope at animal cells or tissues. Veterinary pathology is important and that stems from the fact that in order to improve animal and human health as well, we really need to know what we're treating and what we're dealing with. And so that can be on a day-to-day -day basis, like making diagnoses in pet animals and feeding back to the vets, but also on a wider perspective, thinking about development of new treatments um, for animal and human diseases. If we can get a better understanding of those diseases, we're going to be able to tackle them better. We also need veterinary pathologists to keep track of some dangerous infectious diseases as well and these can often jump from animals into humans so if we can keep tabs on what's going on in the animal population we're going to be able to protect humans as well as the animals. There are lots of different roles that a veterinary pathologist can do. You might find us in the pharmaceutical industry assisting with drug development, working alongside scientists in the field of research and in the field of disease surveillance, so looking out for perhaps infectious diseases in our wild and farmed animal populations. And also a big role, which is my particular role, is diagnostic pathology, so making diagnoses on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, often in pet animals, like, such as dogs and cats. This one is um, from an abscess, I believe, just um, like a mass that's gone quite um, infected. Okay. <clears throat> and that we've grown on there. It only grows on the blood, mm. it doesn't grow on the macronchial, and that was sensitive to everything. Oh, good. That's what we like to hear. I think the pets like to get a report back yeah. that says the bacteria are sensitive to everything. Yeah. We've had one today that was resistant to everything. So oh, really? Some extra. Well, was that a Staphylococcus? Yeah. At some of the bigger uh, veterinary hospitals, you may find pathologists actually in the hospital or working very closely with the hospital. And in fact, a close working relationship with the clinicians in the hospital is often vital to the running of that pathology lab. Residents who are training in pathology may come and visit us here um, to see what diagnostic pathology is like. And um, we also often get clinical vets coming to visit us to maybe discuss and have a look at their cases and to gain an understanding of what we actually do as pathologists. So there is a fair bit of uh, teaching involved. And in other types of jobs, there is more formal kind of teaching roles, such as being a lecturer um, at a university, for example. Veterinary anatomic pathologists learn about the overall structure of animal organs and tissues. And then we will look for changes in that structure and patterns to help diagnose diseases. Veterinary clinical pathologists are involved with analysis mainly of body fluids such as blood, urine, cavity, effusions at the cellular level and they're also involved with advanced molecular techniques and tests and biochemical tests as well. Most of the cases that I'm involved with are from pet animals such as dogs, cats and sometimes horses. But in the field of veterinary pathology, there's scope to learn about a wide range of species from laboratory animals such as rodents, uh, wild animals, farmed mammals, uh, birds, and even fish. So there really is a wide variety of animals that you can specialize in. And that's one of the really interesting parts of the job is veterinary pathologists are able to compare diseases between different species because we know about different species and that's a really useful tool in the field of research as well. My job is to diagnose disease in pet animals and so we're sent samples from practicing vets and our reports go back to those vets and it helps them in making decisions on how to treat their animals. And one thing we specialize here at Cytopath is ocular pathology. So we often get sent eyes, mainly from the UK, but also further afield from dogs and cats which have conditions such as glaucoma. And the aim there is that we might be able to save the vision in the other eye of that animal if we can work out why that first eye has actually got glaucoma in it. Just gives you an example, June 2019, so in one month we had, say, three, four hundred eyes. So it gives you an idea of how many eyes we're receiving from 
around the UK. I'm often asked if the animals that I see tissues from are alive or if they're always dead. And whilst post-mortem exam is an important part of a veterinary anatomic pathologist's job, especially if you're a laboratory animal pathologist or a farm animal pathologist, actually in my particular role as a diagnostic pathologist um, in pet animals, the vast majority of the specimens that we receive are actually from animals that are alive. So for example, if you were to take your dog or cat to the vet to have a biopsy taken, say of a lump or skin, then that would be sent to us for analysis. Um, and the vet would then be treating the live animal. But on an average day here at Cytopath, I will arrive around nine in the morning and we receive all our samples in the post. So once those have been unpacked and sorted, I will start to examine some cases down the microscope and write up some reports to be sent back to some of the vets. I'll then spend around half an hour to an hour in the lab dissecting some of the tissues, including some of the eyes. After lunch, it's time for our daily rounds with the other veterinary pathologists. Then in the afternoon, I'll finish off the day by doing some more reports, looking at more cases. And I generally finish work around 5.30 p.m. So this is our daily meeting of the veterinary pathologists where we get together and discuss our challenging and interesting cases for the day. This one is a cat with a travel history. Extensively travelled around Europe, this cat apparently. <laughs> which is a really yes. funny thought about a cat that's, you know, been on its travels. Yeah. It's all just uveitis here. Yeah. Well, I mean, there, that's tumour. I just showed you, that's why if I did an aqueous on this, you wouldn't... Yeah, you have seen it at all. So the main people that veterinary pathologists work with are lab staff, so our lab technicians, lab managers, and they're really vital to the day-to-day -day running of the pathology lab. We also speak to clinical vets on the phone very frequently on a day-to-day -day basis, and that's regarding interpreting the results of our reports and also perhaps discussing treatment options that they might be considering for their patients. We also have a close working relationship with some of the other veterinary specialties, so veterinary ophthalmologists, oncologists, surgeons and internal medicine specialists. The job does allow for some time for research and we mainly get involved with clinical studies which are alongside the vets or veterinary specialists. An example of a study that we're involved with, with at the moment here at Cytopath is assessing different methods for detecting infections in the corneas of dogs and cats. So the job does give a good balance between work and personal life. So while I'm at work, it can be quite fast paced and work quite hard, but there's relatively little weekend work and there are no night shifts either. So the time outside of work is quite relaxing. Venerophology does allow um, flexibility in working so a big development is telepathology which allows veterinary pathologists to potentially work remotely from the lab um, and this is where tissues and images of cells are scanned at high resolution and then sent digitally to the vets and they can be examined on a computer screen then. In order to become a veterinary pathologist you first have to become a vet and I did my undergraduate training at Bristol University. Then after a short period in clinical practice as a practicing vet, I moved to the Royal Veterinary College to undertake a three-year training residency in veterinary anatomic pathology. If you're studying to be a vet, you will encounter veterinary pathology and it's taught in all the universities and you will meet veterinary pathologists and veterinary pathology residents. So if you're interested in that subject, I really encourage you to go forwards and approach those residents and veterinary pathologists, speak to them about career options that are available and, and what they do in their job. And perhaps you could spend some time with them and see what they get up to. I chose veterinary pathology because as a vet I was always interested in understanding exactly what was going wrong in the animal's body for it to become diseased and pathology gives you a window into that world really and every kind of case that you get is like a little problem solving exercise and I find it incredibly satisfying when you can get to the answer. 
The thing that I love most about my job is that I know I'm helping lots of animals every single day and I want to do the best job possible so that vets will know how to treat those animals. And in that respect, I feel like I'm really making a big difference to animals' lives. If you are interested in veterinary, then I would strongly encourage you to at least consider a career in veterinary pathology. There really are lots of different roles that you can be engaged in, and it's a fascinating subject. You'll always keep learning throughout your career, and it gives you a window into a world which is invisible to the naked eye.